I will. It's in my power to rejoice and be glad. Got to will yourself in a position to be glad, happy. Humble yourself. The Bible tells you to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. In due time or the season, man, you know, he will reward you justly. Amen. You might not receive your rewards here on earth, but God is a good God. And real soon, real soon, everything that you have done for the kingdom and to be a part of God's plan for your life, man, God said, I'm going to bring the past in your life. I'm going to bring the past in your life. And ain't nobody going to be able to stop it, block it, or hinder it. So tonight, before, hold on, I'm not going to jump. I'm moving a little too fast. Let me give honor to Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Amen. The head of my life made it all possible for tonight. Amen. Sometimes you just got to slow up a little bit. Slow down some. Let the spirit settle, settle back down. Settle me down in the name of Jesus. I just thank the Lord. I thank you for everything, Jesus, you've done for me and my life. Amen. Because you have made life that much more worth living for. Amen. I know somebody agree out there tonight that if it wasn't for Jesus, amen, if it wasn't for Jesus, man, the blood of Jesus, man, you know, if where would I be? You know, where would I be? What would I be doing? I can imagine some things I would be participating in because the spirit didn't change. This, you know, I, I didn't care. I didn't believe. I didn't have any hope. But now, that Jesus is on board, man, everything is just where it needs to be. And guess what? Never said it was going to be easy. Don't look for an easy life in Christ Jesus. Amen? Just know that the enemy is always attacking. Also, we want to give double honor. Amen? We want to give double honor to the bishop here. Amen? In the name of Jesus. Amen? You know what? Uh, I, I always tell him this. I really truly mean it. I'm grateful to have a bishop like him in my life because Bishop has truly taught me some things that he don't even know that he just was living. He, he was just living it. And I was just watching. I'd probably be like you, Minister. Uh, you seen how he was doing and how he was dealing with uh, uh, bringing people to church and stuff and all that. And I've been around him going up back and forth to headquarters and call Pepper and everywhere he was going and just watching him. A good example, a good leader, man, in the name of Jesus. And we bless and honor you. We give, all, we give God all the glory, man, but we just thank you. And we also will honor Mama and her absent, but she is present spiritually. Amen? Truly feel it. I looked at her picture today when I came in, and uh, I, I, you know, it's like a, a little son that's coming up to his mama. I said, Mama, I hope you please with me. Hope you please with me. You know, I'm still I'm over here in your corner. We still having conversation, you know what I mean? We just thank the Lord. She has a she has a head start on me, Bishop. But uh, that's all right. That's all right. She just got a head start. That's all. But I know where I know where her portion is. Amen. She's in God's hands. Amen. Resting. Hallelujah. So I can glory in things. I want to give honor to my beautiful wife, Minister Latasha. Amen. Just thank you, Lord. God. Rough, rough road. My my road has been like a Damascus experience, probably in your life there at times. I would say I knocked off my horse so many times, amen? But I was just so grateful that you was there to pick me back up, help me get back up, saddle back up, you know what I mean? Times I just wanted to lay down there, you know? You ever just want to lay in the dirt, Bishop? Don't want to get up. Just, just wilding in that mud, you know? But I thank God the prodigal son was able to go back home. So we give God all the glory. Mom, I bless you and love you. Thank you for being uh, the mom for me that that was miss missing in my absence of mom. When you stepped in, uh, you and Mother Church stepped in. And, man, I'm telling you, it's been a great experience. Uh, um, I truly want to see the greatness coming out of you. I just I just want you to stay tuned. God got you. Stay tuned. Um my son RJ, my spiritual son Jalen, uh, in his absent, you know, because I know if he could be here right now, he'd be here. If it wasn't for work or something, he'd be right in the corner. So that's it. And for the whole household of faith. Y'all to come out to hear what thus says the Lord. The deacons and their wives, those in their absence tonight. Uh minister couldn't make it tonight to she got caught up in traffic, y'all. The enemy wanted to throw a, a 
throw some shade in the game, you know. But that's all right. God's going to make a way so she can bring the word back. She said, I so wanted to, let me see if I can mark her. I so wanted to be here to get that word. I was so excited. Elder, I'm excited. <laughs> and I say, I'm excited too, but God going to get you to preach this word. Don't worry about it. So, okay, let's turn. I, I don't, that's, that's enough for me. Let's turn that Bible to Daniel 6, verses 1 to 3. And I wanted to talk about an excellent spirit. Hallelujah. Glory. An excellent spirit. Hmm. After being saved and baptized, getting full with the Holy Ghost, it's hard enough to stay saved what it is. We got to learn how to turn a deaf ear to the world. Daniel chapter 6 verse 1 says, It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom and 120 princes which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give an account unto them. And the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly approach your throne of grace, Lord. God, I don't know what you're doing right now, but God, I can wait on you. I believe that what you're doing is best for the kingdom, God. Place an excellent spirit over each and every one of us tonight. Touch us from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet. Let us know when we have this type of spirit, the kingdom goes forward. We bless and honor you. We magnify you. We lift your name on high. We give you all the glory and honor and praise, which is due to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may have a seat. Again, I'm an elder, Russell Slade here, Restoration Free Gospel Church of Christ, under the leadership of Bishop John Briscoe. Amen. His wife, Mary Ellis. And I thank the Lord. Amen. Daniel, for the man Daniel, an excellent spirit. That's why it was, that's why it had to be an excellent spirit. Please, Darius. It was pleasing to God more than anything because God had to move on Darius. Amen. God will move on people on your jobs, in your house. Everywhere, everywhere you go, if your spirit lines up with God, God can touch and move and shift the atmosphere to get you to be elevated to places where you never even thought you could be. Here we see it was an excellent spirit in him. The spirit was the uppermost and ruled. The spirit will help you rule peacefully, you know. The spirit will help you, to, you you'll be approachable. When you walk up to people, people don't mind talking to you and being around you. And how did this come about? It came about because he was a man of purpose. Are you a man or woman of but purpose? Are you, are you living out the purpose? Have you asked God what is your purpose? And are you studying to bring or help this purpose to be up front to people wherever you go? They can see it in you. He had a purpose not to defile himself. You know, see, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. You know, out in the street, we cannot let the world see our hand. You know, when you're playing the games of spades and you're sitting in there, you you holding your cards a certain way, right? And you don't want nobody looking at it. They look around and you can be like, go ahead now. Go ahead. And that's what you need to tell the devil. Go on, play somewhere in the name of Jesus. Stop, stop peeping my game. Stop trying to get my whole card. That's what he's trying to do. But if you hold your cards and play them right, the enemy has nothing on you. 
Because you have an excellent spirit working within you. See, that's the problem. He didn't want to defile himself. And so many people today lack purpose. What purpose to live, first of all, to live unto Christ, to be pleasing to Jesus Christ. Amen. This is what we got to do. We got to understand. We got to take note and watch ourselves. The only way we can grow, yes, we have to learn. But the thing is, we got to stop making the same mistakes over and over and over again, expecting different results. It's, 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 it's time to stop playing and start to give surrender. That's what it's time to do. Surrender. Mm. What marks you as a person that has an excellent spirit? That's the question tonight. Is anybody seeing some things on you? See, one thing I knew about Daniel, he was a man of power. He possessed a power that most people don't have. See, the world didn't give him that power. The king couldn't give him that power. Only Jesus could give you that power because he know you're not going to abuse it. He know you're going to use it for the kingdom's sake. He ruled in three great kingdoms. Can you imagine that? Some of us can't rule. We talking about I want a bigger, I want um, I want a, I want bank accounts. And you can't rule one or balance one checkbook. And you talk me, you want this and you want that. Be careful what you ask for. God is listening. But this man ruled three great kingdoms. And he say the Bible was saying it was great kingdoms. And this is something to think about. This is not nothing out of harm's way that you can't do. He said, and over these three presidents, whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give an account unto him. God would make your enemy give an account to you. He's going to give an account to you. Those people that were under the enemy's influence got to give an account to God one day. Amen? They're going to give an account. So don't get mad when they beat you up and talk about you and, and run all your business up and down the street. Don't get upset with them because they're only coming against your God. The princes might give an account to them. And the king should have no damage. King won't have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes because an excellent spirit was in him. I thank God for that. You know, we got to, you know, we should not, we should, we should not be walking any old type of way and talking any type of way when we in the church, when we serving on auxiliaries and stuff. And I say this over and over for a reason because what you're doing is you're trying to pin God back to you trying to bring shame back into you trying to pin him back up on the cross. He got down off the cross for a reason because it was time to go back and to take those sins to the Father so that it would it would bring it would be pleasing. He took him back for it. So we have to worry about that stuff no more, y'all. So if Jesus did all this stuff for us, why is we still going back? Why are we being entangled by the yoke of bondage over again? Why do we keep going back to these things that we know separates us from God? Our prayers and stuff will get hindered. The attitude needs to be checked at the door. And look at these things, and I think up with these things. When it comes to an excellent spirit, I should be always trying to be an imitator of my father. I'm watching him, and, and, and Bishop, I can honestly say that, man. You've been a father. You've been a fin friend. You've been a brother. Man, you, I mean, you've been right there, man. You're showing us. You're showing us, and, and it's good because I know God is moving through you because you don't try to take any glory for it. You don't try to take any credit for it. It's what you know you should be doing. And, I, and I'm grateful for that, man. There's times I done slipped and bust my head so many times when I wish I should have listened to you. And I'm sitting up there trying to go ahead. That's like taking the, the cart, you know, and, and, and putting it in front of the horse. What kind of cart is that? Cart running back with the wheels of flipping, you'll be in trouble. You'll be in a ditch. The importance of, a sp of the spirit ruling. Listen to this. Only... As the spirit rules, do we have communion with God? What are you ruled by? What type of spirits are? Is it the spirits at the liquor store? Or is it the spirit of the most high and living God? Because they got spirits in the bottles too. 
And people, some of the people you're around got spirits too. Don't get me wrong, always mean and evil as a rattlesnake. You can't sit too close to them. They're just like a cobra, they will bite you. And we're talking about in church. I ain't talking about outside the grocery store. I'm talking about at church. You can't sit in that seat right there. That's my seat. And put their pocketbook down. And you walk off and they're still holding their hand over the seat. Man, I watch them, man. They call church folk. Church folk will kill you. Serious. I mean, they ain't got to physically kill you and take you, cause your life. Man, they will cause you to run up out the church in a minute. Go bury your head in the sand somewhere. So we got to be careful what spirit is ruling over us, which in turn can mess up our communion with God. His spirit bears witness with our spirit. Whose spirit? That's Jesus. He bear a witness when he was here then. Jesus was, Jesus had, um, he knew all our uh, infirmities. He knew our pains and our aches and stuff, man. And he took it on. And yet he still went to Calvary. Can we do these things? No. We couldn't. We, we couldn't. I, I can speak for us tonight. I can be Peter on that. We couldn't do that. If it wasn't for Jesus, only one person could take on that assignment. This is life on its highest plane. Life and peace being led by the spirit, having communion with God. Life ruled by the body. Appetite is life on the animal plane. We don't want to be ruled by our spirits. We don't want we don't want have we don't want to have a bad spirit and allow this spirit to uh, cause us to have enemies. We shouldn't be making enemies. We should be trying to make friends. We should be trying to uh, help people to get uh, into the kingdom. We should be seeking after souls. All this stuff can get us to get out of touch with God. The mind of the flesh cannot know God. That's what I want to talk about for a second. The mind of the flesh. Flesh thinking. Flesh thinking. And what I mean by that, man, flesh is, uh, some of us are having flesh attacks. You know, it's just like heat waves. One minute you're good, the next minute you don't know what you're doing. The next minute you, one minute you're telling me, you might say, what's, what, what, what they call it, um, no, <laughs> it ain't schizophrenic. <laughs> Not menopause. I ain't got menopause, sis. A flush attack to me is when one minute you good to go. I think they call it schizophrenic or whatever. One minute or bipolar. That's one minute you good to go. And the next minute you don't even know who I am. You on me. You, you running me down and you chase me down and this and that. So what I'm trying to say is we got to make sure we, we're, we're checking these spirits at the door because these spirits can rule you. And the enemy knows what to do. Trust me. The enemy is behind these attacks. But the flesh could not know God. That's why it's good to speak in tongues. It's good to speak in tongues. That's why I get you. I know y'all probably getting tired of me talking about tongues and stuff. But when you... When you up here, you turn for the Holy Ghost, you receive it, you speak in tongues as God gives the utterance. What I'm trying to tell you is when you start to pray to God, right, the devil don't know what you're talking about, but he gets upset. And guess what? Before you know it, if he don't know what you're talking about no more, he got to get up your house. He said, I got to get up out here, man. I don't even know what's going on. It's like, it's like we in here speaking right now, but somebody come in here, don't speak English, come in here and they're speaking Spanish. Man, I don't even know what they're talking about no more. I don't even know what his next plan. I can only trap him by the things I once knew what he used to do. And that's why it's important to get delivered from things and take on Christ's spirit. See, because if we take on the spirit that we, we think we got that's so good and grand there, all you got to do is tick your button and tick you off, tick tock you one time, you be a ticking lunatic. And you be all over people. That's why we got to pray much, fast, and we got to move in the spirit. We always got to be conscious of something more. There's more. There's more than life in this. This is more than, do I want to end up like this? 
No, but Daniel knew what he had to do. You got to always seek something that will teach us some valuable lessons and, and give us the strength we need to get to the next level. How to be ruled by the Spirit. Let me get off of that because that, that, that bad boy had me thinking there for a second. How to be ruled by the Spirit. This is what Jesus says. Jesus said, this is how you be ruled by the Spirit. You must be born again. That's how you get ruled by the Spirit. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That's all it is. From the earliest days, your body appetite rule. Let you want a piece of that chicken. Smell that chicken, you go, that's chicken. Smell anything in the house that's cooking, that's some food. Your body wants what it wants. It wants what it wants. Look. Your neighbor get blessed and have all his money and things going on and he looking living a nice life. And you go, wish I had some of that money. It's not your money. God didn't give it to you, gave it to your neighbor. Hold tight. Yours is on the way. You don't got to worry about nobody else's stuff. You don't have to envy nobody else's stuff. You have to think about nobody else's stuff. God said, I got something for you with your name on it. So when yours comes to look, rejoice for when they get theirs, rejoice. I mean, be all excited. Say, oh, my God, she got a brand new car. I'm so Act like you ready to get a ride in it. Act like the car is yours. And then when yours comes and you rejoice, the people around you won't act strange. Because they'd be like, when I, when I got my car, you weren't all excited. You didn't even call me back. I called you, told you I had a new car, and you didn't even call me back. You act like you was a little jealous or envious of what I had. And you don't have to be like that because God got so much for each and every one of us. But we just got to be careful. From the earliest time, man, when you was in your crib, you begin to express your demands for someone to fulfill them. Whatever thoughts and desires you had, you was in your crib laying on your back looking up here, you wanted something, you wanted the bottle. I want this, I want that. And your parents bring it to you. And you got a pattern of being used to everybody bringing you stuff. Bring you stuff. Look, when you start crying, you even you even did this to your parents. You start crying. Your parents say, hey, give him that rattle. And they bring it over there to you. And they rattle it. And you be quiet. And then you go sit back down. You go sit back down. Ah! Until they almost train you. But that's what the enemy is trying to do to us as Christians. He's trying to know what you like, what you want, and present it right before you. At the right time, maybe you might be going through a withdrawal or, or weakness. You might be at a low place in your life where the finances are low. You know what I mean? You don't know what to do, and he just presents that thing right down there in front of you. Thing is, don't pick it up. It's a bad setup. When I was in Second Genesis, we always talked about if you don't pick it up, it won't give in. So if you don't touch or take what the devil gives you, it won't affect you. You got to get away from his plans and his schemes because his plans and schemes are just what they is. They're plans and their schemes. And you got to remember, see, one time the devil walked up right. I told you all this before. He walked up right. The serpent walked up right. He was walking up right until God disarmed him and defeated him. That's what he did. And they crawl around now. Curse came upon him. He had to crawl on the ground because he forfeited. God always knew he wasn't to be trusted, but we, we like to trust people sometimes. We give too much trust to good people. Whew, look at this, man. How, how can a man be born again? Whosoever believes in him, trusts upon and relies and commits himself. These are some serious things. Trust upon, relies upon, and commits itself. You not only got to trust in God, it's saying you have to rely on him. See, he's no longer your resource. 
still get walking around. Because think about it. The grocery store is a restore. That's something we want and need all the time, right? It's a resource. The liquor store, let me be honest, it's a resource. Anything that's not is God himself. Because God is your source. He, he, he say, I shall supply all your need, accord, all your need, not needs. Don't put an S on it. According to, because see, we, we can't stop at just need. We always want more. You know, it, it reminds me of the graveyard. Ain't never satisfied. Want more bodies. Remind me of hell enlarging itself every day. One more greedy. He said, I should supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. See, we're, we're rich in Christ Jesus. Man, we are rich, man. We are so rich. Matter of fact, the Bible said he died and became poor so that you and I can be rich. Everything he had, joint heirs, that's what we are. We joint heirs. So if he got the if he got the, uh, if he owned the hills and the cattle, and if he owned the gold, the silver, and the bronze, we own it too. If you are in him, if Christ is your Lord and your Savior, you've been baptized, amen? And some of us may be waiting to be filled with the Holy Ghost. But I'm going to tell you, don't let a soul try to talk you out of it because it really truly do guide you. And leads you into all understanding. So sometimes you're getting some of these messages up here and you're sitting back and you say, I don't understand a thing they're talking about. It's because you just need to constantly be asking God to show you. And God will lead you. You need the spirit. It's almost like a cell phone. You know when you got your cell phone and it ain't get turned on yet. You got to go home or you let them do it. And they got to put those numbers in it. God got to put his... He got to put his spirit in you like they put those numbers in. And then he, then he activates the spirit that he has in because every man has been given a spirit. Every man has been given a measure of faith. Every man and woman has been given a good measure of faith. It, it's enough to take you throughout life. We know right from wrong. We know what we should be doing and what we should not be doing. We should be focusing on pleasing God. It's not about pleasing Darius as they seem. Darius was being used by God and didn't know himself. See, sometimes your enemies don't know they're being used by God. What makes them feel like they're about to get the victory? They're not really ready to get the victory. God is ready to bring it into their kingdom. That's all. But you are a, you're somebody that God don't have to say, hey, uh, I'm going to let him catch you tonight. God don't have to tell you. He didn't tell Job, did he? He said anything he talked. He said, have you considered my servant Job? That's all he said. Sometimes you got to put yourself in a Job situation. But look at Joseph. Joseph was given a coat of many colors. All right? Then the devil came and took it away from him and put him in prison, right? But check this out. Then he was given another coat, Bishop. The Pharaoh gave him a coat. And put him over in charge of his whole kingdom. And then the devil came and took it away from him again. He took it away from him again, but guess what? I'm going to tell somebody tonight, your third coat is on the way. And you know what your third coat is? Victory. When Christ come back for you, when he come back for you, he going to give you a coat. Because one thing, he, you're going to be known. You're going to be known. The world... The world would know you are one of his. And what the Bible said, how will you know that you're one of mine? By the love you show towards one another. It's time to seek our salvation. I thank God for the little short message here dealing with Darius and uh, dealing with Daniel. And, uh, you know, God, Daniel picked God first and God picked Daniel first. No matter where Daniel was, God elevated him where he needed to be and where he wanted. Daniel to be. And just like Daniel, God is elevating us and placing us where he wants us to be. Don't let nobody pull you off your, your stoop. If you're standing tall right here in restoration, if anybody come up to you with some nonsense talk, but come on, come on with me over here in country bunch, uh, uh, 
country bunker church or hokey pokey church, whoever, tell them I know I'm good. I'm good right where I'm at. So don't think the enemy won't speak to people and try to deceive you and get you off the path that God has for you. Restoration has great teaching right here. Many people then came and got baptized in that water over there. They didn't sit over there and they left out here wherever God sent them and took them. I hope and pray that it's a good place. It's a good place, but this has been a place that you can come and grow. And I thank God for it. Because one day, the enemy that's trying to get you to do all these negative things, they got to give an account to God. Daniel was preferred above the presidents and the presidents. You are preferred above the enemy because you have an excellent spirit that's in you. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen? An excellent spirit. If you heard anything for any reason, prayer, for any 